All right, folks, welcome to another budget gem or budget bust. Um, got a big one for you here today. <laughs> I have the Lanzer OptiDrive 700 X2 amplifier. Um, you know, this is an amplifier that I've been curious about for years. Um, for those of you who don't know, Lanzer used to be one of the top companies in the industry back in the 80s and 90s. A lot of their gear was made by Zed Audio, um, which is legendary in the business, maybe a little too legendary. Um, and Lanzer was one of those top amplifier and speaker manufacturers. And then, of course, they came across some little bit of a hard times and they were bought out by Sounds Around who, for those of you who don't know who Sounds Around is, that's the parent company of Pyramid. And Pyramid went on a little bit of a buying spree. They bought Lanzar, they bought Pile, and very much cheapened out the lines. And over the years, I've always been hearing, well, Lanzar is terrible, but their OptiDrive series still is the traditional Lanzar. It's still a good amplifier. And I don't know if I've ever believed it before. Um, I just, you know, it's like, you know, I know when Mobile Authority started making MA Audio that they stepped up their game. But I can't believe it sounds around would do that. So I'm hunting down the internet. I happen to see this one is an open box deal from Amazon Warehouse. And I said, you know what? For the sake of the channel, Let's get one. I've had people requesting an Opti Drive. Let's get one. Let's test one. Let's see what these amps are all about. And when it came in, first thing that stuck out with was, holy crap, this is a big heavy amplifier. This amp is over 23 and a half inches long, not including the RCAs and terminals. If you count the actual physical width that it'll take up for space, before you plug a speaker wire in, this is 25 inches across and three inches tall. <laughs> so, it's not to, and of course, let's not forget 11 inches wide. This is going to take up some real estate in your vehicle, that's for sure. Um, and of course, weight, uh, you know, from the lift -o meter, um, I figure this is somewhere around 25 to 30 plus pounds. Uh, this is a big, heavy amp. Um, <laughs> we're going to see how it performs here, but I did want to take you a couple of things of what you get. As you, you know, when you do an Amazon warehouse deal, sometimes you have to realize not everything is going to be perfect for the discount you paid. Uh, this amp is typically $330. Um, I picked it up for sub $200 which I thought, hey, great, let's do it. And for the most part, everything looks okay. It's got a scratch on the amp and all that, but look at this base knob. This thing came in, it is wrecked. So, you know, this is a big two channel amp. I don't know if I'll ever end up using the base knob. So this amplifier is rated. Let's just pop the book out here. It's 700 by two at four ohms. You can see here, let's see if I can get you nice and close in there. 700 by two at four ohms, uh, 1400 watts by two max at four ohms. And max at four ohms bridge, it's 2800 by one. RMS at two ohms is 1050 by two at two ohms. Um, so how do they get 2,800 if two ohms RMS is a total of 2,100 watts? So I'm going to take it as 1,400 watts bridge to eight ohms, and I'm going to be looking for roughly 2,100 watts at two ohms. Um, I've also seen online where someone said it was 1,025 watts at two ohms. So I'll take 20, 000, 2,050 to 2,100 as what we're going to be aiming for RMS, um, both certified and uncertified. So that's likely at 14.4 volts. So we're going to take a quick walk around the amplifier, see what we have. Now this is a beefy 
old school type class AB amplifier. So it's going to draw some current. So you have one aught gauge inputs for both your ground and your power. A smaller, probably 12 gauge remote terminal input. And of course, this is a first for me in these budget categories. I've never seen four gauge uh, speaker outputs on an amplifier sub $400. And this one has got it. So beefy four gauge outputs. Just to show you here, I have a zero gauge to four gauge reducer. It fits no problem in there. So this amp is gonna uh, consume the current and it's gonna hopefully put it out. Over here we have your controls. You have your, uh, if you had one that was working, here's your remote output. You have your crossover here. Again, this is a full range amplifier. So this you can do full, high pass, or low pass. Um, your adjustable frequency from high pass is 50 hertz all the way to 750 hertz. You have a low pass here that is adjustable from 120 down to 50. You have your bass boost and you have your gain. No subsonic filter. So if that's important to you, this amplifier does not have that. So keep that in mind if this is on your purchase list. On over here, you have your inputs and you have your line outputs. Again, this is a class AB amplifier and it is not strappable. You can't strap two two channels together. Sorry. All right, I know you all like looking at guts, so let's check these out. Looks like a pretty nicely laid out board in here. Um, I, I've never opened a 2000 watt class AB amp up before, so this is a first for me. Got fangs caps, whatever those, whatever, probably China is where those are made from. And these are Seco's or Simco's. Nothing left now but to strap this baby up to the dyno and let's see what can this amplifier really put out. Can we get 2100 watts out of this amplifier at 4 ohms bridge? Can we get 1400 watts out of it at uh, 8 ohms bridged? So we're going to test both channels. That's why it's 8 ohms and 4 ohms. Um, we're going to see what this amp's got. All right, I'll see you after the test. folks final thoughts here on the Lanzer OptiDrive 700 X2 um, as you just saw on the uh, the tests um, this amp's very impressive on the dyno um, yeah we got a little bit under the ratings on the uh, 4 ohm bridge test and the uh, 8 ohms bridge test but the voltage wasn't quite 14.4 and dynamically we we far exceeded the ratings so um, I do feel this amp is accurately rated. Um, it sounds good. I've had it hooked up to speakers um, during this week um, before doing this test, and it sounds really good. Um, I like this amp. I mean, for 330 bucks, what you can find these for um, new, and that's shipped out the door from Amazon. Um, I, I think it's a decent value for a big, can't stress that enough, a big class AB amplifier. Um, 
So is it a budget gem or a budget bust? We got a gem here. Um, especially if you could find one on the pre-owned market that hasn't been ripped to shreds. Uh, this one I picked up for right under $200 as an Amazon warehouse deal. And, um, you know, it's got a couple of little dings on it, but nothing severe to the point where uh, it detracted from its performance. Um, but, I, you know, for what you're getting, uh, I think it's a decent deal. Um, disclaimer, it does get pretty hot. Um, when I've had tests, or I haven't said tests, but when I've been playing music off it this week, and I've just been letting it bump around for a good solid hour, um, this section over here gets warm, which is funny because the transformers and caps and the parts that you normally think would get hot are over here. So um, th there is enough room in here. If I were one of you at home, if I was going to buy this amp, I would probably install a fan on it somehow. Um, there's certainly enough room in the heat sink to accommodate a computer fan. Um, maybe one or two would be ideal. Um, but, you know, that's up to you guys. Um, again, solid value, sounds great, looks fantastic. This might be the sharpest looking amp I've ever, ever run. Um, I like this one a lot. I might not sell this, I might keep this one. Um, I don't know what I'll do with it, but I do like it. So, um, that's it for now, folks. Um, again, Lanzer OptiDrive 700X2, over 2,000 watts at four ohms bridged, class AB, quite the current pig. If you're gonna buy one, upgrade your electrical systems, big time. And that's it for me, folks. Um, until next time, I got more amps to test.